Hello everybody, it's Nerdgasm back with another top 5. And in this video, I wanted to count down my picks for the most influential, emotional, and shocking deaths in comic book history. Something like this is very hard to narrow down. The impact of a death is very subjective. One could be powerful and memorable to one person, but completely fall flat to someone else. And it all comes down to how invested you are in any given character, how invested you are in their stories overall. It might even involve a generational gap to a certain extent as well. How familiar you are with certain eras of comics. Either way, these are my picks, and if I miss any you would have included, just simply leave them in the comment section down below. A lot of characters have died in comics over the years, big and small. Right out of the gate at number 5, I am going with a controversial one. The death of Jason Todd at the hands of the Joker, within the 1988 storyline Batman A Death in the Family. This one caused some backlash, as Jason's death was determined by the fans, who would call a 900 number and vote whether or not they wanted to see him live or die. Over 10,000 votes were cast, and a very narrow majority was in favor of killing him. The difference came down to only 72 votes, which is insane. A lot of people will tell you that the Jason Todd character was unpopular, and I mean he was compared to the original Robin, Dick Grayson, but that's just because his origin was made too similar to that character, and he was a bit more rough around the edges than Grayson was, a bit more unlikable as a person, hot-headed, rebellious, aggressive and whatnot. That said, he had a lot of redeeming qualities to him as a hero, and a lot of fans did like him, which is why they were pissed when DC killed him off. If you want more information on the storyline, I'd advise checking out my review of it I did last year, but it's one of the most significant and influential in Batman history that is still affecting storylines involving the character, even to this day. Moving on to number 4, with the death of Jean Grey, at the end of the Dark Phoenix Saga in 1980. She had tried to restrain the Phoenix Force inside of her, and made the decision to sacrifice her own life, to save the lives of billions more on Earth, and throughout the rest of the universe. The events of this storyline are iconic, some of the most memorable and moving in all of X-Men. Next up at number 3 is the death of Barry Allen, The Flash, within the 1985 storyline Crisis on Infinite Earths. In it, the heroes of the DC Universe must face off against the all-powerful Anti-Monitor, a being who controls the Anti-Matter Universe, that plans on destroying the Earth with a special Anti-Matter Cannon. He is stopped when the Flash creates a speed vortex around the cannon and draws the antimatter energy into it, but unfortunately, it becomes too much for Barry's body, and he dies in the process. Though Barry Allen has since been brought back in the comics, his death within Crisis on Infinite Earths remains one of the most powerful and tragic in DC Comics history, one of the most selfless depictions of heroism in the comic book medium. Crisis on Infinite Earths was significant, as it popularized the idea of large-scale crossovers in comics, and the events that transpired within it rebooted the entire DC Universe at that time, dividing it into two eras, pre-crisis and post-crisis. At number 2 we have the death of Gwen Stacy at the hands of the Green Goblin, following her fall from the George Washington Bridge, and Spider-Man's failed attempt to save her, inadvertently breaking her neck in the process. This is one of my personal favorite moments from Spider-Man mythology, and the cover of The Amazing Spider-Man number 122 is my all-time favorite in all of comics. I have a giant version of it hanging on my wall. The death of Gwen Stacy was powerful, tragic, shocking. I don't think a whole lot of people predicted it when it happened in 1973. She was a prominent character in Spider-Man stories at the time, and her death led to a new era in comics, a new era in how these stories would be told and characters represented. The death of Gwen Stacy cemented the Green Goblin as Spider-Man's greatest adversary, taking his personal vendetta against the wall crawler to new heights of evil. 
I've reviewed the death of Gwen Stacy before on my channel if you would like to check out that video. I go into the aftermath of her death, how aggressive Spider-Man becomes, willing to kill Goblin to get even, and of course, one of the best instances of a supervillain doing himself in I have ever seen. Before we get to my number one pick, let's go through a few honorable mentions, the first being the apparent death of the Human Torch in Fantastic Four number 587, when he attempts to fight back an army of Arthrosians, a Nihilus's insectoid army. What makes this death is the reaction from Ben Grimm on the other side of the Negative Zone portal, someone who has always seemed to hate Johnny, but has a soft spot for the kid deep down. Another great demise is Nightcrawlers in House of X issue 4, where the X-Men attempt to destroy control collars of the Mother Mold facility on the Sun. Kurt is forced to teleport himself and Wolverine to the final switch, and he is disintegrated instantly, with Wolverine surviving thanks to his healing factor. This death is so effective because it was the only way to stop Mother Mold, and it was abrupt. You aren't prepared for it, which is just how death should be, it's realistic. I of course have to bring up the death of Superman. Despite being iconic, the reason it's only in my honorable mentions section and not on my actual list is because it only happened as a gimmick to sell more comics at the time, that's really it. Superman came back relatively quick afterwards, which kind of undermined everything. I don't hate it, it's still a great death, but it just doesn't feel as genuine as some of the others I've talked about. I don't think it's aged as well. The death of Bucky Burns was important because it led to the creation of the Winter Soldier. I think we can all appreciate that. Rorschach's death in Watchmen was pretty powerful. And of course, you have all the origin-related deaths like Uncle Ben, Thomas, and Martha Wayne. Even the entire fucking planet of Krypton. Group all of those together if you want, I don't care. They just didn't make my list. The death that I consider to be the most emotional and impactful in comic book history is the death of Peter Parker, Spider-Man, in the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Peter dies while he is trying to stop the combined forces of Norman Osborn as the Green Goblin and his version of the Sinister Six, consisting of Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Electro, Kraven the Hunter, and the Vulture, some of Spider-Man's greatest rogues of all time. Throughout the Death of Spider-Man story, Peter is pushed to his absolute limits physically, and a series of injuries breaks his body down. In an attempt to save Aunt May and MJ from Goblin, he crushes the villain with a truck, but it explodes, and Peter succumbs to all of his wounds. Though he manages to stop Osborn, it costs him his life. Aunt May and MJ desperately try to save him in his final moments, but all Peter tells them is that he did it, that he might not have been able to save Uncle Ben, but he managed to save Aunt May. I don't want to go into every detail of this story, because I do hope to review it in its entirety at some point down the road, but this is the ultimate definition of a hero. This story, and lead up to Peter's death, it shows the perseverance he has, the selflessness at his core, willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to save the ones he loves. Spider-Man stories feature two of the greatest deaths in comic book history, two that made my list, and it's not hard to see why. No other superhero deals with death and tragedy quite like Spider-Man. He's truly one of the best there has ever been. And of course, let's not forget, rising from the ashes of this tragedy was Miles Morales, who I have talked about before on this channel, who I gave the number one spot to in my video looking at the top five comic book characters of the 2010s. Despite being a very new character in his infancy from a narrative perspective, he is already accomplishing great things and can stand shoulder to shoulder with some of Marvel's finest. I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, please subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of all future content I release. I will see you all in the next one. Take care and stay nerdy.